See that? Yeah. See that? Steve Recker. Oh. It's all right, buddy. No harm done. Thanks. Guess I'll stick around. I'd like to get a look at Steve Recker. He never comes down to the city hall. His secretary runs all of his errands. Mr. Recker's secretary is here, sir. He says it's urgent. The mayor will see you immediately. Oh, hello, Nicky. Oh, what's so urgent? I don't think, Mr. Mayor. You're just going to find out why the boss had the dictograph installed. <laughs> Our friend Councilman Merkel having another political conference? Yeah, I just trailed John Rance to his office. What? I don't understand. Rance is Recker's right-hand man. And Merkel is trying to get something on Recker so he can make himself mayor. Put it all together and it spells, uh, something. You want to be mayor next election, don't you? Sure. But not a mayor like Bradley. Wrecker's office boy. You're just like everybody else in this town, Merkel. You're afraid of Wrecker. Nobody can be mayor in this town unless Wrecker elects him. Well, he controls the whole political machine. Well, what of it? If you throw a monkey wrench in the right direction, you can cripple any machine. But first, Mr. Rance, you must have the monkey wrench. Listen to this. The other day, Wrecker called me in. He said, from now on, you are going to sit right at my elbow. In that case, you'd know every move he makes. Sure. And before he makes it, you'll know it, too. You get the idea. Sure, I get it. We'll drive Recker and his grafters out of the city hall. We'll let ourselves in on some of this money they've been stealing from the city treasury. Then it's a deal. It's a deal. Is there no honesty among men? You can search me, Mr. Mayor. Well, Steve's going to hear about this immediately. I'll take care of that. Can you be at Wrecker's house at 9 o'clock? Well, I'm scheduled to address some club tonight on how to run a city government. <laughs> One of the boss's speeches? I'll go over now. You can't. The boss is staging a birthday party. Make it around uh, 10.30 tonight. <laughs> but surely Mr. Wrecker is coming to his own birthday party. Of course. When I remind him, it is his birthday. <laughs> oh, hello, Harvey. Uh, do you know Madame Ying? The unhappy fact is, I don't. Uh, this is Harvey Gregson, president of the Center Bank and Investment Company. How do you do? I called to pay my respects to Mr. Recker on his birthday. He'll be delighted, I'm sure. Oh, oh yes, yes. Mr. Recker always likes to see his old customers. Old customers? Before repeal, Steve Scotch was rated the finest in the country. Oh, <laughs> but this tea. Mr. Recker always believed in prohibition, and still does. He should. He made millions out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do nothing of the kind. That's allowed. There's Recker's hostess. Well, what do I care? If you invite that man to dinner, I'll walk out of the house. I'm not going to invite him. You are. Steve Recker? That guy never gets into our house. That's why you must ask him. He's very anxious to meet nice people, and I'm very anxious to be re-elected. I don't care if you are. No. Definitely no. Well, Madam Ying, have you met Mrs. Carson? I'm so glad to know you, Mrs. Carson. You're Mr. Recker's hostess, aren't you? Yes, his hostess. Hostess? Hostess. Will you excuse me? I'll get Mr. Recker. Don't let us detain you, please. I know it's beautiful, but your guests are waiting downstairs. He died in 1695. 
Senator Carson is here? Senator Carson? Windbag. And Judge Parker is here. Mm, let him wait. He once made me wait three years for a parole. And the president of your bank, Harvey Gregson. Gregson. <laughs> He's very sociable since I saved him from bankruptcy. He's a rubber stamp. But Steve, it's your birthday, and they've come to pay their respects. They've come to remind me there are still things I can do for them. They're small and cheap. They are what I don't want to be anymore. And yet there are so many fine men in this city. Judges, congressmen, senators, the real people. Why don't they come to my house, Lanyin? Perhaps they don't want to know you. Can I see you, boss? It's very important. Go back to my anxious friends. Say I'll be down soon. But Steve, you... Can't you hear me? How did you find out? I followed Ransom to Merkel's office. How nice of Mr. Recker. What? Put his name on the plaque so we wouldn't think it was Napoleon. <laughs> Margaret and Case. Margaret, what are you doing here? I've crashed the party. I telephoned your house and they said you were here. I've always wanted to see Steve Recker. Well, you're not going to. I didn't mean to be rude, Emily. It's always open season for crashing cocktail parties. Not that, darling. Besides, there isn't a cocktail in the house. You just don't belong here. Come, we'll now, take Emily, a... be reasonable. Margaret's perfectly welcome, and I'm sure Mr. Recker would like to meet her. Yes, and I'm sure she'll find him interesting, too. Oh, I know I will. Don't bother to introduce us. I'll fade into the background and watch. No. We're going. There's Recker now. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. All my good friends who have remembered my birthday. And uh, reminded me that I'm one year older. <laughs> but I forgive you. Steve, I want you to meet Mrs. Carson. It is so good of you to visit my house, madame. Thank you. I see, madame doesn't like me. Well... Oh, no, she doesn't like me because I take up so much of her husband's time. But I didn't know he had such a charming wife. From now on, only one conference a week. <laughs> <laughs> All the charm of a diplomat. <laughs> yes, and ten times the generalship. Yes, I know. He just got in control of the center bank. He's my boss now. Hello. Hello. You seem to dislike crowds as much as I do, Miss Van Case. How did you know my name? From your pictures in the newspapers. <laughs> Are you surprised I read the society page? A little. Are you uh, surprised to see me here? A little. But tell me something about yourself. Something I haven't read in the newspapers. Oh, I'm afraid the newspapers have covered it all. Teas, parties, charity bazaars, dances. Among those present were Miss Margaret Van Case, etc., etc., etc. <laughs> no. No? No. The other Margaret Van Case is the one I want to know about. The one who is here now. You. And uh, suppose I won't tell you about her? Oh, let me remind you. Trespassing is against the law. Don't tell me Steve Recker admits there is such a thing as the law. <laughs> I told Miss Van Case she'd find Mr. Recker interesting. I'm sure she will. Was that necessary? Oh, get your things. We're going. Not until you invite Rekka to dinner. Then we're here for the winter. 
And so, behold the last of the Van Cases. I live in a lovely old house that the Chamber of Commerce Bulletin used to describe as one of the show places of the city. And now, every morning when I awaken, I'm afraid that I'll find a factory in the backyard or a filling station on the front lawn. <laughs> You're joking. I wish I were. They've zoned the district for new industries. Progress, they call it. The city must grow. Hmm. Yes. Yes, many times I have ridden through your district. The beautiful old houses remind me sometimes great music, something from the past that dead men have given us. Don't tell me you read poetry. Hmm? Oh, no, I've never read a poem, <laughs> but I've seen many. Love music? Oh, yes, especially Mozart. But he doesn't know Mozart. Listen. No feeling. I would like to play Mozart for you. Or Wagner. Do you play? When I'm alone. Then I can never hear you. There are people who do not rob you of being alone and yet are there. <laughs> you will let me play for you after the others are gone? Well, I don't know. I. Uh... We must run along, Steve. Oh, I'm so sorry. My parties are very dull, I'm afraid, but this one has been brightened by a beautiful presence, madame. Why, it's been delightful and a great pleasure. If that were true, I would be a happy man. But, Mr. Rekha, it is true. And we want you for dinner tomorrow night. You come, Steve? How could I refuse your kind invitation? We'll be delighted to have you. Are you coming, my dear? Oh, I'll be along in a minute. I have my own car. Don't take up too much of Mr. Recker's time. He's a very busy man. <laughs> <laughs> you mind your own business, John. Uh, tomorrow night, Mr. Recker? Madame. have been a musician instead of... But I am a musician. Yes, that's right. You are. Instead of what? I don't know. I, I was very young then, but I still remember... The stories about Steve Recker, gangster? Yes. But no stories about Recker, the musician. No. No stories about Recker who loves beauty. Or talks like a poet. No. No. That is not news. Don't waste your talent, Steve. She's gone. Up here. Hey, boss, let me. This is my business.
Hello, Steve. Hello, John. Come in. You didn't come to my birthday party. Oh, I'm sorry, Steve. I had to go to the dentist. Oh, oh, you had a toothache. Too bad. I hate pain, John. That's all right now. Sure, sure, everything is all right now. Well, let's have a drink. You are in such pain you forget I don't drink. But uh, you get yourself one, John. All right, Steve, I'll be right back. warm in here. Well, it's your birthday, Steve. Thanks. May you have many of them. And may you live long. Thanks. Same to you, John. Tell me, when you were at the dentist, did you happen to see Councilman Merkel there? Steve, I can explain oh, that. Oh, I know. I know, John. Merkel tempted you, hmm? Oh, of course, I understand. But the boys don't. Steve, you wouldn't turn me over to them, would you? They'll never get you if you do as I say. Sit down, John. Right as I dictate. Start off. Dear mother, I have decided to go away. For a long time. Do not think I'm a coward. Steve, where do you go? Write it. Goodbye. Sign it. John. Steve. Don't kill me. No, Steve. If you'll only give me a chance, I'll square everything. You are going to do that now. <laughs> I thought you just put in it. Pinch a lot of kia. Lot of what? Lot of kia. Well, maybe they call it that too. Huh? When you grow up, young fella, you'll learn that the best smoking is something that costs ten cents. <laughs> Hiya, Pop. Hello. Some aroma, huh? Yeah, take a look, Inspector. That's got some aroma, too. No. Yeah. I can't believe it. Well, he's in the morgue right now. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't there for his health. <laughs> yeah, death due to falling from 11th floor. No evidence to indicate foul play. Accident. Accidental. 
Yeah, as accidental as a punch in the snoot. Say, you don't think Wrecker had well, any... Oh, sure, who else? Well, nobody saw him come in, nobody saw him go out. He must be invisible. Invisible is right. All except in the little scorebook. And the score is now Steve Wrecker, eight, John Q. Public, nothing. Looks like a shutout. Well, maybe and maybe not. We haven't been to bat yet. Well, I'm gonna take a run over to the morgue, see my old friend John Rands. And I'm gonna visit my old friend Steve Wrecker. Not that I don't trust you, baby. Yeah? <laughs> There. See? Mm, I know, Steve, but that district is ideally located for a factory and warehouse section. We don't go through with the plans. Well, why, we... Mr. Mayor, do you always hesitate about my ideas? Hmm? I run the city well, do I not? The people are happy, everybody has money. It is a prosperous administration. Of course, Steve. <laughs> in fact, it's the best administration in history. Now and then a few cranks complain and yell graft. But in the end, everything works out all right for everybody. Oh, I get your point, yes. If we allow the zoning commission to put up factories there, we'll ruin those beautiful old homes. That's it. And some of our finest citizens live there. That's the, the Weatherby's, the Morgan's, the Van Cases. We will make the district a beautiful place. Boulevards, parks, nice life. You know those high ones along the sidewalk? <laughs> we won't have any trouble changing the plans, I'm sure. The council will be easy to handle with Merkel away. Oh, Councilman Merkel has gone away. <sighs> He's leaving tonight. Said he'd be gone for a month or so. Physician prescribed a rest. Poor Mr. Merkel. He's not well, eh? No. Too bad. He's such a fine man. Well, it's convenient. Sounds like an ambulance. Inspector Brandon of the Homicide Squad. What does he mean, storming into this district like a madman? <laughs> He's making a call on me. Well, that's terrible. I'll have the chief reprimand him. Oh, no, please, please, let him have his joke, Bradley. It's one of the few pleasures he has. Joke I don't understand. Only Brandon and I understand. <laughs> you better go. What? That way. Mm. Good evening, Inspector. Oh, hi, Empress. You know, I think it's about time the record got you a butler's uniform. You always seem to answer the door when I call. That's because I always know when to expect you. Feminine intuition. Yeah, and while we stand here and chew the rag as we always do, Rekka has a chance to think up the answers, hmm? A labor of love, misunderstood. Yeah, I know more than you think I do. I know that you're the only honest thing around here. Just why you stick is beyond me. Perhaps you'd like to join Steve at supper. Boy, I should be delighted if it was his last supper. My friend, the inspector. Hey, Rekka. If you don't mind, Empress, uh, we got a couple of things to talk about. There's nothing wrong. Why should there be? No. I'm sorry, Steve. Hmm. You didn't come to my birthday party today. No. I just come from a party. It was me and the coroner and John Rance. Me and the coroner did all the talking. Yes. Poor Rance. You know, when I heard about it, it spoiled my appetite. It spoiled his. Yeah. Oh, I'll be back later, boss. Come in, come in. Nothing special, just our friend. Maybe you'd like to say hello? Hello, Inspector. No, you haven't trained this monkey very well. He ought to make a little bow when he says hello. Bow, please. Uh, little one. Ah, he'll never be as good as Rance. <laughs> Poor Rance. He had everything to live for. Why should he kill himself? How did you know it was suicide? The verdict's only ten minutes old. It only looked like suicide. Uh, who would kill him? Who? Now, I got his name in my little book. Uh, same, uh... Little book? Mm-hmm. And his name's on almost every page. When I catch him, I'll have you promoted. Well, me and Rance, we were like that. Yeah, you and Feeney were like that. You and Cornell were like that. 
And they both spoiled a couple of appetites for you by committing suicide. Death is such an unpleasant subject, Inspector. Well, let's forget it. Yeah. Uh, tell me, is this uh, just a friendly call? No, not exactly. I'm returning this. Oh. The birthday present they sent you. Hmm. Tell me, Inspector, is there anything significant about the fact that we were born on the same day? Yeah, maybe there is. We won't die on the same day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll put this with the other. It makes seven. <laughs> seven envelopes. Seven years. And you still pay your rent in a small cottage. No, no, you're a very strange man, Bandon. Just a fool copper. But I like it. Oh. To you, from me. Little birthday present. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you touch me deeply, Inspector. Oh, it ain't anything. Mm -mm, no, no, it's all for you. Delicious. Delicious. You know, we got them in a lot of different flavors. There's one I'd really like to have you try sometime, Ricka. Smart copper. Uh, keep your teeth shut in the game level and knock them out for you. Oh, please, please, Inspector. Please forgive him. He means no harm. Why, you're both my dear friend. Oh, oh you and Nicky uh, are like that, oh, huh? Of course. You get it, Nicky? Like that. <laughs> Hey, boss. Have a piece of handcuff. That isn't funny to me. You have no sense of humor, Nicky. I don't want it like that. He suspects, boss. Don't be a fool. He knows. He stopped suspecting five years ago. Got all the dope you want, boss. Not now. Four wins. Six a second. And two is. Yeah, yes, I, I can see the ball. Thanks for the tip on number four, Steve. Mm -hmm. Do you always know who's gonna win? When my horse is running, I do. Number five in the next race. I'll shoot the bankroll. Sit down. I'm gonna place a bet on a horse. Shut up. What about Miss Van Case? No money, no father, no mother. Lives with her aunt. Poor girl. She's got a boyfriend. So what? He's a swell like herself. Phil Easton, ex-football star. Young, good looking. Good looking. <laughs> good looking. How much money has he got? No money. Sells bonds. Bond salesman. <laughs> he belongs to the Winhaven Country Club. If he's broke, how can he belong to that? He was born into it, which is the only way anyone ever gets in. Phone the company he works for. Tell him Mr. Ecker wants to buy $20,000 worth of bonds. And tell him Mr. Ecker would like, hello, would like to buy them from Mr. Easton. Hey, but if you buy the bonds from him, he'll get the commission. What's the idea? So he can pay up his club dues. Get moving. Hey, tell him to be at my house at 7 o'clock. I'm Phil Easton. Please come in. Thank you. I, uh, I didn't get the message until a little while ago. Uh, Mr. Reckers, I mean. He said to be here by 7. I'm a little late. He's about to leave for dinner. But I'm sure he'll see you if he said he would. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Mr. Easton to see you, Steve. I'll take these. I'm late, Mr. Recker. That's all right. I got your message. Mm. Then you know what I want. 
$20,000 worth of bonds. Yes, that's what they said. I have a list of offerings here. Industrials, municipals. We have a new municipal offer. Uh, no, 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 no. I never buy municipal bonds. Anything else? Use your own judgment. Get me up a list. Well, that's certainly fine of you, Mr. Recker. I'll have it for you in the morning. Then I'll see if you are as smart as I've heard you are. Well, I'm afraid you're flattering me, but I like to hear it just the same. You know, young man trying to get ahead, wants to marry a girl. Yeah. Maybe with a commission you can get married. You mustn't mind him. He's only joking. Oh, but he's not so wrong at that. <laughs> Three or four more deals like this, and there will be a Mrs. Phil Easton. Show me you know something about the bond business by the ones you pick out, and maybe... maybe I have some plans for you. You mean that, Mr. Recker? Sure. Well, I hardly know what to say. Things like this just don't happen to bond salesmen. But they do. Yes. Oh, wait till Margaret hears this. Margaret? That's a pretty name. She's a very pretty girl, too. You'd think so if you saw her. You may have seen her pictures in the paper. She gets around a bit. Margaret Van Case? Margaret Van Case? Do you know her? I've seen her pictures in the papers. <laughs> then you know why I'm so crazy about her. Well, I'll run along, Mr. Recker, and thanks again. I'm going right out and hit myself over the head with a horseshoe. Good night, sir. Good night. Good night. Mr. Recker's residence. Is this Mr. Recker's hostess? This is Mrs. Carson speaking. Will you give him a message, please? Ask him if he'll be good enough to stop at Miss Van Case's home and bring her to dinner with him. I'll give him the message. I'm sure he won't mind. Goodbye. I'm going to the Carson's for dinner. Yes? I may be late. You go home. All right, Steve. Mrs. Carson wants you to pick up Miss Van Case. I told her you would. You are an excellent hostess, Lanyin. You always know the right answers. Is there a pipe organ in the Carson home? You are not so smart where women are concerned. To Margaret Van Case, you are a novelty, nothing more. I take back what I said. You do not always know the right answer. I'm not answering questions now. I'm telling you that this girl belongs in another world, a world you don't know, one you can never enter. You think so? I know it. Stay where you belong, Steve Recker. And uh, here's a list of new customers in the investment department. You'll find some of the best names in the city on that list, Mr. Recker. Yeah. Yes, I see. I don't mind saying that Phil has done an excellent job in a little over two months. <laughs> You're doing fine. I said he was a smart young fellow. I surround myself with capable manpower, like you. And like you. Thank you, Mr. Recker. Manpower is everything. Hmm. Napoleon was a great general. Without smart officers and a strong army, what could he do? Hmm? So I, uh, uh, well, I work the same way. <laughs> now, really, gentlemen, this bank must be the best bank in the city. Why? Because I'm proud of this city, and it must have nothing but the best. Someday, Mr. Recker, the public will reward you for your interest in its welfare. The public has always uh, been good to me. Yes? Miss Van Case is here to lunch with you, Mr. Easton. Well, uh, you better tell her that. Uh, tell Miss Van Case to come in. You mustn't break a lunch and date, my boy. Three men in a conference. Well, we're practically finished, though. Then you won't need me. Yes? Mr. Easton, Mr. Cortland is here, sir. Oh, uh, well, tell him I'll see him in a few moments. That's Terry Cortland. I've been working on him for weeks regarding a trust fund. I guess you're out of luck, darling. If you can get Terry Cortland for a customer, I'll be willing to skip lunch. That's not necessary. 
You can lunch with me. Oh, but I don't want to disrupt your plans. They include lunch. Fine. Thanks a lot, Mr. Racker. Well, you'd better hurry. I don't want to keep Terry waiting. <laughs> <laughs> We're being put out. See you later, big business. I saw an architect sketch in the paper today, Steve, that pictured a beautiful garden spot. Yes, yes, I saw it too. I'm likely to awaken any morning to find a landscaped garden in my backyard and a gurgling fountain on my front lawn. They're much nicer than factories and filling stations. But you shouldn't have done it. I? <laughs> the council killed the zoning ordinance and decided to put in a park system. No, I, I had nothing to do with it. Stop being modest, Steve. I know you did it, and I appreciate it. But I think we should understand each other. Apparently, you haven't noticed this. Phil gave it to me last night. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? No. Phil is only a boy. You deserve a man. But I love Phil. What can he give you? Himself. Not enough. Oh, I know you are rich and powerful, and I should be all agog because you want to marry me. But honestly, I'm not. It may be a shock to you, Steve, but even you can't have everything you want. <laughs> if someone had told you three months ago that today you would be having lunch with Steve Racker, you would have said no. Now today you tell me, I cannot have you. And yet, three months from now... Three months? Three years? Three thousand years, Steve? No. I'll take the dollar lunch with the chicken soup and roast beef. What do you have, Inspector? Yes, uh, Sam. Thought you didn't like roast beef. I work up an appetite for red meat every now and then. <laughs> Make his rare. Well, won't be long now. What won't? Mm -hmm. Who's the girl? Margaret Van Case. Of the Van Cases? Yep, the town's front family. What's he doing with a girl like that? Making his first bad move. Trying to trade a blackjack for a silk hat. Yep, it won't be long now. The boss wants you to put this in the safe. What is it? Dynamite. It looks quite innocent. Yeah, it costs $50,000. For such a little package? You know how Steve is. Nothing but the best. Especially for the girl he's gonna marry. Marry? Sure, Miss Van Case. He's got a taste of society now. And if you don't crush it with this Van Case girl, it'll be with somebody else. I told you to go to the airport. You told me to go to the jewelers and pick up the package. Go to the airport. A plane arrives in... in 10 minutes. Who am I supposed to meet? Just stand there. They'll come to you. Hurry. Where'll I take them? They'll know where to go. Is that all? For you, it's plenty. She's beginning to ask too many questions. You want to talk, Lani Yin? Yes. Well? Well, what do you want? Nothing. You're a strange person, Lani Yin. You want nothing. I've never before met anyone who wants nothing. I possess everything within my reach. So I've stopped wanting. Mr. Confucius? Lan Yin. I like Confucius better. And I do not want what I cannot have. There is no such thing. There is one thing. Oh, there is not. Nothing. Nothing, I tell you. You're making a mistake. You've reached too far, Steve.
swell place. Why did Rick ever tell us to come here? What's the idea? What happens next? I told you I don't know. I don't know anything, see? Not anything. Shh. Put that away. Oh, Steve. Did it. Now listen, you two. This job is easy, but it must be done right. It'd be funny if I'd forgotten how to do this. Mm. To work for Recky, you have to be everything but an acrobat. Yep. Even that might come in handy. Now, how's that? Not bad, Professor, not bad. Just a little something I picked up in my travels. Mr. Easton, have you any gilt edge bonds that might return a nominal investment? <laughs> <laughs> these make 74,000, these make 180,000, and these bring the total to $218,000. How do you want to pay for them, Mr. Thomas? In cash. I don't like checks. I have the money right here. Well, that's a lot of money to be carrying around. The money will soon be your responsibility, Mr. Easton. Yes, but these bonds are just as negotiable as cash. Why not leave them here in a safe deposit vault? Yes, I might do that. Fine. I'll make out a vault slip right away. Is, uh, is that clock right? Yes. Afraid of being locked in the bank? I think I can get you out. Now, if you'll sign these. Just be quiet, Mr. Easton. Don't be a fool. You couldn't get out the front door. There's the stuff. How did you get in that way? Where did you get the key? Quiet, Mr. Easton. All right. Answer it. Mr. Easton? Yes? The guard is here, sir, for those bonds. They're ready to close the vault. Tell the guard... Tell the guard to leave the vault open for a few minutes. Yes, sir. All right. Let's go. You mean me? Yes, you. Come on. Get going. Headquarters, Inspector Brandon, please. Inspector Brandon speaking. Take a look at number seven, Eden Apartments. What's the matter? Somebody playing our radio too loud? Number seven, Eden Apartments. Follow Brandon out there. Tell me what happens. Easton, all right. Yeah, Come on. Come on. Yeah, he's dead drunk. He must have been working with a mob and they crossed him up. Say, that's why I got this tip. They figured that this pinch would give them time to get away. I'll call a wagon. No, no. Uh, we'll take them in and keep it quiet as long as possible. Hmm? Good idea. Come on, bud. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Mickey, they picked him up. Get the bonds. Send Crouch and Handy out of town in an automobile. Then go to police headquarters and keep your eyes open. Okay. Don't argue with me. The boss wants you to stay away from railroad station and airports. That's why you're leaving in this car. Okay. Mr. Ricker is expecting you. What is it, Steve? 
you've had some news? Yes. I sent for you to tell you they found Theo. Found him? Where's Steve? When? Is he all right? Not so fast, please. Yes, uh, I think he's all right. Take me to him. Not yet. He's under arrest. No. No, Steve, that can't be. Phil isn't a criminal. When a man disappears with over $200,000 belonging to someone else, that's what the police call him. Then... Then you think he's guilty. I said the police. What I think doesn't matter. But you have enough power to free him, to clear him. Sometimes it's not so easy to fix things. It's too bad. Nice boy like Phil. Prison, disgrace. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? To see him in disgrace. You put him in that job. Why? So that this would happen. It sounds fantastic, doesn't it? But it's the truth. You wanted me, so you built Phil up. And then knocked him down. No one would believe that, would they? But we know it's the truth, don't we? Well, why don't you answer me? You have answered for me. Is there no way he can be cleared without your help? No way. Is there no way I can show you up for what you are? No way. All right. Then what's your proposition? If I marry you, you will clear Phil. As though this never happened. As your wife, I'm to open the doors of respectable society to you. Yes. I love Phil. Do you understand? Yes. And I hate you. Even so, I'll try. Very well. I'll go through the ceremony. I'll be your wife as far as appearances go. And I'll do everything in my power to pay you back for what you've done to Phil and me. You love me, don't you, Steve? Yes, Margaret. That's fine. That makes it so much easier. I'll take, but I'll never give. I'll show you what living in contempt really means. Before you're finished with me, Steve Wrecker, you'll think your gangster enemies were amateurs. And in the end, I'll go back to the man I love, if you'll still have me. Well, do you still want me? Yes. Yes, it cannot be any other way. I cannot do any other thing. And you'll get Phil out of this? Yes. Go home, pack. Meet me at the airport at 7 o'clock. But Phil, what about... Phil, Phil, I will have him released immediately. When we return, you can explain to him that you married me because you wanted a rich husband. No, Steve. No, I must see Phil before we leave. Then there's no deal. Very well. The airport at 7, then. Come on, quit stalling, will it? Since you're not smart, a man with whiskers walks into your office and wants to buy some bonds. <laughs> a man with whiskers. <laughs> oh, what's the use? You won't believe anything I tell you. I've had enough of this. Let me phone my lawyer. Ah, uh, you can have all the lawyers you want. After I book, you can't keep me here oh, like yes, this. Yes, yes, I can. I can keep you here for 24 hours on suspicion before I book you. I'll get it. Come on, get wise. Don't make me shove you around. Here. Thanks. Now look. Who? Oh. Good news. Habeas Corpus Parker's on the phone. Inspector Brandon talking. Yes, I did. I arrested them this afternoon. Well, I'm only questioning them. Yeah. Yeah, all right. All right, I get it. 
That was one of the city's big minds talking. He just got a message from his great friend, Mr. Recker. Mr. Recker wants you booked right away so his lawyer can spring you on bail. You understand that, don't you? I think so. Okay, Phil Easton. I arrest you for the crime of grand larceny and conspiracy to commit robbery. That's the legal phrase, see? But you don't have to worry about that because Mr. Recker's lawyers will fix everything. But get this. I'm not through with you. And I'm not through with Mr. Recker. You can tell him that from me. Take him out and book him. His bail's probably waiting. Traffic violators? Yeah, they drove through a red light. Well, we found these guns in their car. Well, come on in, boys. It's just about tea time. We haven't got any tea, but we can have a little chat, huh? Come on. These are the airplane tickets Mr. Recca ordered. Tickets? Yes, ma'am. Two tickets for the 715 plane. Thank you. Thank you. Boston. The cops got Crouch and Henley. Brandon's got them. He's working on them now. For what were they arrested? They tried to beat a stop sign. The cops frisked the car and found two heaters. Too bad for Crouch and Henley. But suppose Brandon rings an Easton and he identifies them. Relax, Nicky, relax. It will need more than Easton's identification. It would need those bonds. One, two, three, four. What's this? Four. The bonds, of course. Look again. The newspapers. Well, Nikki. Boss, you don't think I'd take them? You don't think I'm that crazy? I didn't open this bag until this minute. You let Crouch and Hanley go without checking up on them. I didn't have no chance to. I wanted them to scram like you said. I... Shut up. The police frisked their car. They found two guns. And the bonds. And Brandon is working on them now. And he's got the bonds. The bank gave the serial numbers to the cops. Shut up, I said. But if Brandon rings an Easter now, you won't be able to spring Crouch and Henley. They'll sink to save their own necks. That Crouch is a rat. Brandon will not ring in Easton. Come in, Mr. Easton. I'm looking for Margaret. I went to her home, but she's not there. I thought she might be here. I... Don't worry. I'm sure everything will be all right. Well, well, how glad I am to see you. Thank you, Mr. Recker, for sending that lawyer. I... It was the least I could do. And you believe in me? You know I didn't do it? Not for a moment did I think you were guilty. Mr. Recker, I don't know what to say. Say nothing. I will talk. We will straighten everything out. You mean the robbery? Yes, I think we can clear things up. Uh, will you excuse us, please? Of course. These are the stolen bonds. You know everything, don't you? Like Inspector Brandon. More than Inspector Brandon. Who were those men that Steve hired to steal these bonds? How would I know? You knew where to get the bonds. Yes, but... Stop asking me questions. You've told me enough. Hey, 
And all you have to do is take a look at the two men and see if you can identify them as the ones who held you up and stole the buns. And this Nicky is waiting there now with the police? Yes, in the Ace Garage at the corner of 10th and Detroit. I'm sure all our troubles will be ended when you meet Nicky. Thanks, Mr. Riker. What a pity. He's such a nice fellow. You mean you're going to? I have to. He's in my way now. Is that why you're sending me to the Ace Garage? Yes. Oh, no, boss. Not Easton. I, I, I couldn't. Afraid? You know I'm not afraid. Maybe you would sooner go there with him. Hmm? And wait together. OK, boss. When you get there, he'll be waiting in the garage. Hiya, Nicky. Keep going. What's the idea? Pipe down and keep going. Get in that car. Say when. I am surprised, Lanyin. Oh, come, Steve. Just one highball. I have never seen you drink before. You'll never see me drink again. I promise you that. You know what I think about liquor. Of course. But please join me just this once. Please. You are acting very strange, Lanyin. Not the way you expected me to act, is that it? Expected you to act? About what? N nothing, Steve. Well, here's health. When I pause like that, you should say, and happiness. I hate toasts. You know that. So do I. Music is much better. You know that I'm going away? Aren't you? Yes. Do you know whether I will return? Will you? I don't 
No. I have no use for so much money, Steve. You will keep it in case I should return. You are the only one I can trust. Even better than myself. I have been thinking. Maybe I'm like the crazy fellow who went looking for that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. He didn't find it. Maybe she is a rainbow. Maybe she will break me into little bits. And I will crawl away. Maybe. But I will be sure of one thing. Lanyin is waiting. Waiting for the little bits that can never be put together again. Yes. Yes, because you are a friend. A real friend. Before I didn't know it so much. But now I do. Maybe I'm a little sad. I cannot understand it. I'm sitting on top of the world, and I'm not happy. The top of the world is a lonely place, Steve. Lanyin, what is it? Lanyin, you are the one who always tells me everything. Answer me, Lanyin.
right, Mr. Wrecker. Drop it. No. No. I didn't do it. I didn't. I couldn't kill her. Brandon, I couldn't. Not Lani. Give me a hand. You can't eat these, Riker. No. No, Brandon. You got me wrong. You can't do this. You can't, Brandon. You're a square copper. Eight men you've killed. Now you're gonna hang for something you didn't do. No. No! You can't do this. The law is caught up with you, Wrecker. If this doesn't do it, we've got you for the ranch murder. Come on, Wrecker. Make all the arrangements. It must be beautiful. Very beautiful, James. She liked Handel's Largo. Tell the organist to play it. Mr. Ricker, is there anything you'll need, sir? No. The one thing I need, I can never have again. I don't know nothing, see? Nothing. And cops, they don't say anything for a while. And finally one of them says, scram. So just as I'm walking out, Brandon comes walking in with a boss. The boss wearing bracelets. First degree murder, says Brandon, when he books the boss. Maybe, says Brandon, he'd like to call you a lawyer. But the boss don't say nothing. Just shakes his head. A couple of weeks, and I'll know how to play this thing. Then, uh, maybe I'll throw a party then. Do you think them swells would come if I threw a party for them? I'm sure they wouldn't. And even if they did, I wouldn't be here to open the door. And then Len Ying gave me the tickets and said you'd be on the plane. That's why I'm here, darling. Len Ying. What did you say? What a beautiful name. Mm -hmm. 